and we were open for about a year and a half and then COVID hit. Uh, I was probably almost 400 grand into debt after oh, things. Wow. And- Did the bankruptcy really affect your in, uh, credit? <laughs> yeah, this is where it gets interesting. Here's as I was trying to mix velocity banking to IBC. And the uninterrupted compounding interest was mind blowing for me. People on the internet, you know, are gonna potentially roast you <laughs> or me because they're like, what an idiot. Because <laughs> I really, I'm gonna actually do something I've never done on Naked Numbers. I mean, this might give you goosebumps. 215 and divided by 0. 0.4. You, you ready for this? Like, what's the opportunity cost of regret? The value of your life is always measured by how much of it was given away. I'm Brian, I'm from California. I'm 43 years old and this is Naked Numbers. Perfect, man. Thank you so much for, for being on the show. And I am excited. I'm excited because in looking at your financial life, there's not a lot of people that have come on Naked Numbers to date that are, are fans of overfunded life insurance. So we're going to have a whole conversation about your philosophy there, the things that you wish you would have known before you're getting in, things that you are planning on going forward. And I can, I can tell you that there's a lot of uh, answers that I could give you from a standpoint if you have questions there. Um, and I'm just excited to... Um, in the, in the few minutes that we've been talking, like, I'm just excited to, to have this conversation with you. And I think a lot of people are going to be blessed through it. So I have to say, before we jump in, this is not uh, tax, legal, investment, insurance advice. This is not advice at all. This is for educational purposes only. So if those of you watching, you want to come on the show, you do it, but I'm not giving you advice and you're, you're not, not giving advice through watching this on YouTube. So don't sue me. And that's my disclaimer. Um, before, before we jump into your data, I would love to hear who you are, why you've decided to come on the show and like, what would be in, what would be a, some important facts for people watching to like, just know, like Brian, tell me a little bit about Brian and his family. Sure. Um, I have a family of six, including myself and my wife, I have four children. I have, my oldest is a sophomore in college. Um, my next is a boy who is getting ready to graduate. And then I have two other boys that are uh, y- as young as sixth grade at the bottom. And then the other one's a freshman. Um, I am a big uh, soccer player. My father's from France. Um, and uh, that served a lot of my uh, teens growing up. Uh, so I'm big into sports. I'm still involved in our, our community that way. Um, I'm a triathlete, or I try to be at least. Uh, Iron Man. I completed Iron Man last year in Iron Man, California. Uh, so I'm, I'm, that is something nobody can take away from me. And I will always tell people because I'm proud of that. Um, in my profession, I'm a clinical laboratory scientist uh, for a healthcare provider here in California, uh, turned healthcare IT analyst. So I kind of have, I've always had kind of been a little bit of a computer geek in the midst of all these things. Uh, and so I found a good niche that kind of fits those two. Um, Man, I have so much more I could say, but that might be enough. <laughs> um, you're you're married. I am. Um, I'm married. Yeah. My, 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 by the way, my mom is named Lori, so I think that's oh. that's awesome. What is uh, what does Lori do? She is a clo- she's a supervisor. Uh, she actually is a supervisor at uh, one of our church facilities. She does a, in charge of all the laundry, and uh, it's actually the temple here in Sacramento. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, that's awesome. So so she and. She, Full-time mom, which is a, uh, which is a uh, yeah. part-time uh, job, you know, full-time underpaid. Mom. Like, I don't want to get controversial, but we talk about gender gaps and all that stuff. I think we can all agree that uh, stay-at-home moms um, don't get paid enough. Um, yeah. I win brownie points. I think every time I say that across you, the board. And you talk so, about resources. That's a resource for a family. I mean, especially right. these days nowadays in California. I mean, it's. That's that. right. Well, I just, I just um, had someone on the show, and they're they're paying two grand a month for for, um, their, their kids. And, um, it's, it's crazy, but it's kind of that catch 22. And so that's amazing that she's able to do that. Um, you know, one thing that we're really key here, um, is just what, what does your life look like from an intentional living standpoint? Um, I don't believe you're wealthy if you're not able to live intentionally. And I think one of the things that really drives intentional living is your why, how, how would you, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but how would you articulate you and your family's why? And if money wasn't an issue, like what would you be spending your time and skill sets doing throughout your life? That's a great question. I, um, I, I think about this a lot. Um, from my why, I love to, I would say I have a heart of a teacher. I love to teach. That's why I love to coach. It's like I, uh, 
I love to bring people together. I'm a connector and a teacher, I'd say. And in that way, I like to find people, help people find their own path and help them connect along the way with people who can compliment them and help them on their journey. Um, and a lot of search, that's just something I really find passionate. If I could find a way to have a job to do that and actually make money, that would be, uh, you know, awesome. I, you know, I, uh, but yeah, that's, that's where I, at. so I always look for those opportunities. I find it through serving. So at the end of the day, serving in any capacity is going to help me meet that need, whether it's community, faith-based, whatever it is, right? There's always people yeah. need service, whether you have the same faith or beliefs or not. So, yeah. um, so I, I, I look for that. Um, and I, and I just, I love pushing the human boundary. That's why I love Iron Man. That's why I love those human, like you don't know what you can do until you do it. And most of us don't dig deep enough. We, 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 we do our weight workouts to stop it. You know, one to two reps left. We stop early. We do it. We stop when we can do three or four reps. It's, you know, it's, it's scientifically proven a lot of studies. That's how we are. So that's kind of my why. Push, push people, think, and help uh, people along their way. That's, that's people are ready to run through a wall right now. Listen to this. So who, who would have thought naked numbers would, would produce su such motivation? I, I would say I, I heard this quote um, that really impacted just my life. And it's, it said the value of your life is always measured by how much of it was given away. And so it's like, man, like when you look at some of the most influential people, the people that have changed, changed their lives, it's usually the people that gave something They gave their time, gave their, gave their life, gave, gave money, all that, all that. And, and so it's, it's really cool if you can think back on your life and be like, man, like I lived a valuable life and I'm measuring that because of what I gave away or was able to give away. Um, I think that has a lot to do with having a really fulfilling intentional life versus the people that yeah. just make enough to survive. It's like, it's, that's indirectly a very selfish. Um, and that translates into maybe not having a ton of fulfillment. And so I think, um, that's really cool. I very much hear that that family is important to you and, um, really pushing your body is also important. I think like other people could be like, you're a sick, sick man to want to do this Iron Man. But I think it's really amazing and our, our bodies are capable of so much. So um, anything you want to add before I ask you one more question before we dive into your data? Oh man, <laughs> How, I'm enjoying what, uh, what the last question I have as it relates to your overview is what beliefs did you have about money or like what was your upbringing about money? Because I find that the way that we are up brought up um very much influences the way that we think about money today sure uh very interesting so my father was a sort mo most of his life was as a produce manager for a well-known retail chain the thing that most people if that's what they judged him at they would be they'd be very surprised um he went to school for business um he wanted to get in business. He told me as I was a young man, he went into, stayed at the store because taking a pay cut after he got his degree was not appealing to him, but he always wished he had. But what he did do because with that, that um, education business, he got into a lot of real estate. So my dad had a fair number of properties. Not, I, I, talk, I say real estate. There's a lot of people get into a lot of real estate, but for us growing up, he had... I mean, by the time I was 15, our house was paid off because he had been funneling all the, from a duplex, from, he had two other houses, two, two other homes, our home and a duplex. Not a lot of real estate, but it, it supplemented a produce manager's income enough that we, uh, we honestly, and now I know we didn't really have that much want. Now, talking about how I brought up, my parents were a little bit, if we're, if I was using another person in this, uh, this uh, IBC world, <laughs> uh, Garrett Gunderson talks a little bit about your personality and my family's a little bit miser-esque. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Um, so, and you may have something similar, but that was kind of their, their, their thing. They, uh, we had some money, more money than we thought, but my parents could be a little stingy with it. Um, so... But they always had me early on. We had budgets. I'm grateful for what my parents taught me. Um, they sh they showed me good money habits. A lot of a, good, a lot of good money habits in a world where yeah. you never know what you're going to get with families, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they always my mom always made, taught me pay your tithing first. You pay yeah. your you. I had a little box, so three three spots: pay yourself, 
pay the Lord <laughs> and, and then save for whatever you're going to buy. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's just kind of at a very minimal level. And my mom gave me a little journal. I had to keep a ledger. What I paid These were just, yeah. that was my education in, in finance and I wasn't yeah. perfect. And you know, but that's what it was. And I came a little older. Yeah. That's when I was what, really young. So what, uh, what made you want to be on the show? Yeah. I love what you guys do at the end of the day. I, this might jump, jump, but, um, you know, I came from that, a world of the Dave Ramsey and Susie Ormans, right? Like, which I love, I right? get on your budget to, like, that was a big thing for me when I finished my, um, my, my college education, I paid off on my student loans. I had about $30,000 in student loans. I paid them off in a year and a half. Like I had a situation where all of a sudden I had a job that was making more than I thought I was going to make. And the blessings were abounding. I just paid it off from there. When I had, there was this time when I didn't have any necessarily debt. I didn't know what to do. I, w- I wish I could go back and, and get into IBC and things. So when we talk about what you're doing and what we're doing on this show, that's why I'm like, that's what I want to be. I, I believe in this. I know I can be more efficient in my use of IBC. Um, and I'm, I, again, I don't know what I don't know. I'm the first to yeah. say, if I don't know something, I'll raise my hand. If I think I know it, I'll talk about it forever. But like, cool. that's what I'm excited about. Sure. <laughs> All right. So, um, income wise, um, you make 140,000, which is, Fair which well. is awesome. Probably feels a lot less in California, but that's, that's awesome. Awesome income. <laughs> it's more um, than that. Yeah. But. And, and, uh, your, your wife makes about 15,000. And so bringing your, um, total gross family income to about 155,000. Is there anything else that you want to add there? Um, I mean, sometimes in my job, I get overtime, so that can pop up a little bit, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's I, my sure that, income right now. That's my sure. Yeah, and I see a 3% cost of living. Obviously you're that's, that's a, that's something that do you, do you get a raises every year? For the most part I do. Yeah. I, okay. I, my, our, our company's done pretty good. It's a pretty big health uh, okay. company. So it's been pretty consistent. And then from, uh, um, you, you have from 42 to 60, um, like you want to retire at 60 or like, I hate the word retirement, but like stop working at 60. I do too. Um, I guess my, what I would like to do is be able to work when I want to work and where I want to work. Yeah. (laughs) That's how I put it instead of retirement. That's, that's how I think about it. Cool. Um, all right. One thing that we're going to do is we're going to take what you're currently spending and we're going to model that out. And, um, one thing that I see that you've put all the way down is your in, like passive income st- debt snowball. And one of the things that I think will be vital and it'll be fun to do this in real time is be able to see what kind of income should we be shooting for and then kind of reverse engineer that and using infinite banking. If that's the strategy you want to go, it's really comes alive when you can buy other assets that produce income and we'll be able to get an idea of like what that number is so that it's not this some um, feeling, but you actually have in your mind, like this is what I need to be bringing in. Um, and so that's something that we'll, we'll do it by, at the end. And I'm excited to go yeah, through that. Me too. I'm, a, I'm a numbers guy. I'm a data analytics guy. Cool. So I, I yeah, love that's that. great. <laughs> um, liabilities. It looks like you have a 403B loan, um, you know, and it, it looks like um, it's $21,000 at a five and a quarter interest rate. Your monthly payment is 570. Um, is that, you want to just unpack what that is? Yeah. So um, <laughs> that 403B loan I took, I mean, I, in that one, you actually are paying yourself back with interest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously it's on already tax dollars. So not yep. you're double getting double tax on that. So I don't, at the time, I never really thought about that till I got into this IBC world and realized like, Oh, I'm putting te- double tax anyways. Yep. But uh, I actually used that to fund my first policy to, rather oh, wow. than okay. do, I did a dump in. Okay. So awesome. I, uh, I did a dump in. I, it, it worked out. Um, I saw, I, I saw some signs and I personally believe the market was going to be dipping. Yeah. Um, and then I came across IBC and then rather just kind of do the minimum funding, I, I kind of looked at it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put more in there than I originally started. And I'm going to get this debt snowball like rolling a little quicker. So that was okay. the decision I made. I don't when know. You say, when you say debt snowball, I don't see any other debts that you have. Oh, well, I, I wiped them out. Okay. <laughs> okay. You wiped them out using. Yeah, most banking. of them I did. Yeah. Um, this might be intimidating for, for me to be asking you this, but in your own words, explain how you discovered infinite banking. What does infinite banking mean to you? 
Sure. Discovery of it was kind of by chance. I just happened to be scrolling on Instagram and I don't remember whose channel it was, but someone was asking a guy in the street, what's your, uh, you know, it's one of those ones that are asking people, people who look wealthy, like what's your, what's your one money advice. And it made me stop because the gentleman said whole life insurance. Yeah. Now for me coming from the Dave Ramsey world, I was like, what the heck is this guy talking about? Like, no way. Right. And then I don't remember if it was the same day, but it was within the same amount of time. I saw another YouTuber or uh, another, uh, you know, someone else, not YouTuber, just another person who was talking about this infinite banking. And I was like, he uses his whole, whole life. What the heck? And I just found Nelson, Nelson Nash, found some other books, uh, just did a deep dive, found your channel, found some, some others. And I just said, my goodness, I, you know, keeping in mind, I had just come off of a bankruptcy because COVID killed off what we wanted. We, we did that approach. Like I had said, like uh, that mentality, you got to risk money to make money. That's what we had just done. And we lost um, yeah. a lot of money. And so I, in that moment, I, I even clicked. I'm like, man, if I had just funded it a little bit different myself, I could have floated those loans a little bit or not had to pay them or just, it would have given me some flexibility that I just didn't have with the way that I funded my business. And as I just went that deep down in this more and more and more, I was like, man, I wish I would have started this a lot longer and could have used it a lot, you know, a lot different. So it was the epiphany for you that you could be, do you like you, that you have access to your money throughout your life? You still get the benefits of long-term there, compounding. There's, there's <laughs> like, we always talk about growth, right? And growing your money. Like it's magically going to happen. That's the, that's the yeah. 12%. Like you always hear like, it, this is what it's average. That's what it's always going to grow at. That is not how it actually works when you look at it. And, and the truth is I look at, and nothing's guaranteed in life. I mean, I love whole life, but I don't know what's going to happen in the world. Like it, yeah. maybe the, it, if, like if, the dollar, if, if, if yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so many unknowns. Yeah. yeah, right. If whole life goes down, I think everything's going down. But I don't. That's just my opinion. But I, I looked at it. And I saw this. Like you say, it's a foundational asset that if I would have had, if I would have had access to a lot earlier, I could just think. I could just see how my choices would have been different. Yeah. How I would have used money differently. All those kind of things. And so, infinite banking. The last part was, what does infinite bank mean to me? It's making sure your money grows on. Un- for the rest of your life, every dollar yeah. you put in there is efficient and growing for you. And it gives you that flexibility. It's putting yeah. your money in a way where you get to make the decision of what's going to happen to it. Not some other, you know, other, yeah. other person who's going to, you, uh, in, in your research, did, was it, did the, like the creditor protection and the fact that you have an increasing death benefit and like the other re like areas where life insurance could potentially enhance income distribution. Did, did that stuff, excite you or was it mainly just the fact that your money could compound and you could utilize your money at the same time and that concept long term was like oh i i see where that could be beneficial yeah the uninter- the uninterrupted compounding interest was mind blowing for me okay um and then the idea that you can borrow against it again coming from a guy who was doing these 403b loans on a couple of different things i'm like it wasn't that foreign to me. I'm like, oh, I can borrow against it and pay it back. It's not yeah. exact because obviously you're paying some insurance uh, companies yeah. getting a it little worked out for you if the market's down. But yeah, 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 it's, right. Like yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, it's yeah. interesting. So all those things kind of, and then, uh, I mean, the creditor thing was interesting to me because Calif, I'm still unsure in California. It seems like you still don't not get great. Great coverage not in great. California. So yeah. that that part, I was like, well, that's cool. Not so much for me, but yeah, you know. Um, okay. But yeah, those are. The well, I'm just curious. Ones. I'm curious. That everyone has their own journey. I think the, yeah. you know, logically, if I'm playing devil's advocate, you you look at it and it's like, hey, you're making money, but you're also paying for a loan. So, like for me, what what really the epiphany for me was like when I started putting actual benefits on other things than just the rate of return, because the uninterrupted compounding and being able to borrow against that was the only thing that was beneficial. Like mathematically, yeah. it's not that valuable that's, that's true one thing i will say though is oh oh sorry and no no i mean i that's that i mean mathematically yeah. you, can poke holes. you could you could make arguments about human behavior For sure. it's like do people actually have compounding the rest of their life probably not no. are they gonna stop compounding curves and all that but human like mathematically it's not like revolutionary but when you start adding in all the other benefits that's where for me it's like 
yeah, people hate on insurance all day long and they compare it to an investment, but that's the big misconception is I don't think they actually understand when we talk about giving your dollars more than one job, the philosophy of foundational as an and versus an or. It, that and asset, your book was great. Dude. I think it was the second or third one I read after yeah. those other ones. And so that 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 hits the point home too, is it, it's, it's not an or, it's literally yeah. the and. The one thing cool. I could say also I didn't touch on is um, for me, again, I'm a legacy guy. Family is everything. Like my progenity, my, like that's it, right? So much of our financial planning that I heard is really much, oh, just, you know, cover your life. You just need to cover your life while you're alive. Like that's, that was, that's yep. in, fair enough. I mean, somebody, that's their mindset. I, I can't handle it. After I'm dead, I, I can't, I can't really affect the world anyways. A lot of people's mentality, right? Yep. Well, the whole, what we're talking about with whole life and other things is, you, well, you can. You can have a, whatever, it's a family office. You could do the, like, they're all, what would billionaires do, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. you can... You can literally affect future generations yep. by your choices of where, where you do with your money. So that legacy was another reason. But I, really now, I don't know if you, in the overview, you really talked about your business that failed. Um, <laughs> yeah. What, you don't have to give me any details if you don't want to, but like what they, like, I feel like that's pretty important to understand the context of like, what type of business was it? Were you in there long? Was it a franchise? Like, what was it? And how did it fail and what did you learn through that? Because one of the things that I'm going to go talk to is like infinite banking is only as good as how we use it. And so we got to figure out a way to create cash flow. And that's, it's obviously something I can't give investment advice, but that's what we'll have an exercise around of like what, what that is. Um, and obviously business is a fun, fun, but it sounds like there's some battle scars there. So can you tell me everything that you can and then we'll just leave it at, at that. Sure. Yeah. We, um, I hit a point in my life and I love my job. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I love it, but um, I hit a point where I just felt like I needed to do something else as well. I needed to, whether it was this push for me to affect other people, connect the teacher in me, whatever it is, I felt like I needed something else. I spent a good um, multi-day fast trying mm -hmm. to decide that this was something for me to do. Um, multi-day, like it was four days. And um, I had a lot of clarity. <laughs> I did some exercises during that that time. And I was like, I felt more clarity than I felt a lot of times. And I felt really impressed to do this. So we opened a franchise. I won't name names, but it was a kids education franchise. So they attend right up my alley. I love teaching. I love helping people along their way. Um, as a franchise, getting kids and how to use technology and then be effective with it. Cool. Um, I love the idea, right? The truth is it was a brand new franchise. When you know there's a new franchise, there's not a whole lot of details. So you're really banking on yeah. the idea and all those things. So uh, one of my key things I learned is if you're going to do a franchise, <laughs> make sure you really know the franchise is actually viable and it's not just a hit and miss. They have two sites that worked and the other ones don't, right? Yeah. Um, but I felt impressed to go on it uh, and to go on and, and we funded it. Um, how much? How much was it to fund? <laughs> well, it, the the franchise fee itself wasn't very much. It was only about twenty thousand dollars, and that's what I used originally. I used a four hundred three B loan for that, okay. um, and then afterward, I I got a little like antsy. I didn't want too many people buying up around me, so I bought another territory for another ten thousand dollars near me. And yeah, and we just started building it out. Um, that franchise, uh, all in all, by the time our, our, we had our bankruptcy, uh, was probably almost four hundred grand into debt. After oh, things. Wow. So the build out was supposed to be uh, by their by their uh, standards. The build out was only supposed to be you know like one hundred twenty thousand maybe, but there just wasn't the data to validate that. Right, you, there was maybe only a couple centers, so it became really different. Um, the franchise itself recommended even the spaces, the size of it. They've since changed. I get, I understand why because. If you've never run into re retail leases before, you pay a lot. And it's not just what you're paying for that. You have triple nets and all these other things yep. that add up. And um, so, yeah, let's just say uh, the space was too big. The rent was too much. Uh, the idea in and of itself, I think if we had had a smaller space, I could have made it work. But even my friends who are in it now struggle sometimes saying it's not really making what they thought it was going to make. Yeah, it's man. Not, that's so that's so the four hundred thousand. How did you like? Did you take out <laughs> SBA loans or how did how was that originally funded? That's the HELOC, the HELOC that I drew. Okay. So at the time, okay. interest rates were good. It was like a three or four percent HELOC. We were looking at SBA. We were looking what to do. My accountant had just funded his accountant. He had spread out. He had used a, a HELOC for his. 
but he was ma- he was cash flowing, so he paid his off really fast. Um, I was banking on some cash flow. It never came. And yeah. we struggled through. We had a really long build out. It took way longer than we thought it was going to take. Yeah. Uh, and we were open for about a year and a half. And then COVID hit. And did COVID, was COVID like, was it going to fail without COVID or did COVID just like, it was definitely on, it was definitely tight and we were, de- like, we were getting, so in that kind of business, summer camps are a big deal. So it's like a big cash yeah. injection yeah. in the summer. So, uh, you know, yeah. you never know, you can't never say never. Cause that summer income was huge. Right. So it was, yeah. it was definitely struggling. I wasn't taking a draw. It was not making me any money at all at that point. And you were, were you working as well? Or you were I, working I had on- my main job as well. I was double. Yeah. yeah I, I yeah. when I, I'd finished my main job, I'd go over there. I mean, I had some staff. We had staff. I mean, I, I had staff. I had, to, okay. I had to train. That was the part of me that loved it. I was training people, te- like helping staff, kids, like running the business, the entrepreneur on me. Like I loved yeah. it. Yeah. You know, cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I just, that's, that's a good perspective because that will come back later in this conversation. <laughs> um, your assets, you have $51,000 in a 403B. Is that ooh, not including the loan? So it's like, that's, that's actual... what's in there. As I pay it back, it goes okay. back up, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then you have a 529 plan that's not even worth talking about. 200 nope. bucks in there. That's and then you, have a, <laughs> yeah. then you have a savings account that has about 30K uh, high yield. You, you said it has what kind of interest rate? I think it's like it's it's like four and a half, I think, right now. There you go, dude. There you go. It's, it's awesome. Okay. And then um, you have life insurance, which I'm going to include as an asset. And, um, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven whole life policies. And then you have a term policy, correct? You're right. Correct. Yes. Okay. Man, when and, you say it like that. Yeah. And then people, uh, people on the internet, you know, are going to potentially roast you <laughs> or me because they're like, what an idiot. <laughs> so we're, we're going to break this down. You have, um, we won't say the companies, but you have a, uh, a policy that has, a six six hundred and sixty eight dollars of cash value and an outstanding loan of thirty three thousand and I and so so where did that so that's a overfunded yeah. policy it's an overfunded policy a couple of years in I using it for dub, debt snowball some of it uh, yeah it's you know it takes a little time for those things to post so it's really got part of me like two thousand in there right now but I had just taken some money out of the last premium so okay yeah. and what do you put in per year. Uh, that one's 10, 10 K. And then w- do you know, yeah, the 30K you, originally, okay. And right. then, um, with the, w- with you f- funding it, like I'm a nerd when it comes to just seeing if these things are efficient Are w- where is it at from a, like you put $10,000 in, are you getting more than 10,000 each year on, on the annual growth? <laughs> well, I guess. No, no, it, it was, it's really on that debt snowball. I paid off a bunch of debt, paid off some okay. cars. So I'm paying, I mean, I'd have to really look at those numbers and think, I mean, I'm paying almost, a, I'm making the payments back to myself. <laughs> so yeah. I'm making two car payments back to myself with a little bit of interest. So yeah. And when, and when you say back to yourself, back to the insurance company yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, um, okay. And then, so the, what, what I'm curious is when you pay your $10,000 premium yeah. is your cash value, um, increased by more than 10,000. Oh, like it, it, I think this year, this next year, it probably okay. will. It's getting pretty close. It's, I, this will be the third year. So okay. it might be, it's pretty close, like third or fourth. Do you, is probably one do you know when the break even is on this policy? <sighs> on those, most of those, most of those Lafayette ones I have, I think are three or three to five, somewhere in there. Okay. So, okay. Somewhere in five years. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. Great. So you're, uh, you're using this as like a, you have high early cash value and you're using it as like a, a savings place, you get multiple benefits of your money, but you're, you're using this as a debt snowball and you don't have much debt because you've used this to pay off debt. So, so now you're making payments back. Um, I'm just curious, what, what car payments did you have? I had a, uh, which car it? So I had a sedan. It's kind of our family kids car. Okay. Um, that's I think about four fifty a month. And okay. then the other one was uh, my wife's uh, kind of SUV, I have like a, a similar payment, probably like. What, what type of interest rates were oh, were there? Well, the latest one I think was like almost almost five, like four point something. I got in, but it was still a little lower than they've been lately. And okay. then the other one was probably about the same four. 
Okay. Okay. Um, we're it we'll, great, uh, it was after the bankruptcy. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty. Okay. Did the bankruptcy really affect your in, uh, credit? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, initially, I mean, I'm. It's. I. I want not. Knock on wood. It's better than ever. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Not better than ever. It's pretty. It's fine right now. But it okay. took me some time to come back. So it okay. was bad there for a little bit. Um, you have a second. You have a second policy that has eleven thousand dollars of cash value in it, and um, and what is your premium on on your second policy? That one. So that one. The it's combined. Supposed to, we wanted to put about fourteen thousand in it. Okay. Uh, it kind of covers. Gives me some space to build a line and capture my charitable giving. That's okay. The purpose of that. So you, put, you put money that you want to give into that. Yeah. Um, okay. Then it grows, um, stores, give more. I mean, the life, the, the plan is for it to grow. And eventually if, if we do things right, even be a big gift to wherever we want to gift it to at the end of life, but we'll, we'll okay. get there. We get there. Um, then you have kids policies and you're putting a hundred dollars per month per kid. And it looks like you started that this last year. Yeah. Um, okay. And sure, then yeah. you have your wife has a policy that um, putting five thousand dollars in a year looks like there's an outstanding loan of about seven thousand eight hundred yeah. and a cash value of three thousand four hundred twenty nine bucks. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going about to paying that off recently, by the way. Okay, so I the cash for it. I'm debating on just wiping it out and. But so I, yeah, because you have you have thirty thousand dollars in a high yield savings account. Yeah. What What's the interest rate on 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 these policies? Oh, five uh, percent on the Lafayettes. Um, I don't want to misspeak on the One America, but I believe it was like four point two five. Okay. May have gone. Up. We'll just say five percent. Um, awesome. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Easy enough. Easy okay. enough. Um, all right. Any, anything else? It looks like you have a group met life policy yeah. and then you have a term policy. I do. Um, I'm assuming the term policy is convertible. It is through you guys. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Then it better be convertible. <laughs> um, all right. So perfect. Um, and then you have, um, it looks like you have a living will. You have your health, healthcare, power of attorney, revocable living trust, all that dialed in. You, you, you visit it last in 2020, but you feel pretty good about that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I think it, I need to, I just make sure the trust is always my beneficiary that can get a little weird with the whole living trust thing. Um, but you yeah. know, like you just, it's worthwhile to have it just to avoid. Yeah. Okay. And then it looks like you're, it's very important to you that your kids, um, have have just mission experience and and so are you helping pay that or is that going to be like the life insurance policies and that that was kind of my that's i would like for that to it we'll see if it gets oh. to that point one way or another we'll figure it out but it'd be an uh, interesting case study to be like the the life insurance policies that maybe i mean this might give you goosebumps but what if it helped their kids do some things education mission wise like that, that could be that could be a really interesting concept um and then and then your big takeaway is debt snowball passive income and and so anything that i i missed going through i i guess we didn't go through your real estate you have 20 percent of your income is going to a payment of 2635 dollars you have unpaid balance of Four thousand four hundred fifty six thousand um, with an interest rate of five point six percent, which is pretty good, um, with a market value of six hundred forty four thousand. So you have approximately about one hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars of equity in your home. Yeah. Um, your home right now, like, is it something that you see yourself staying in? Um, that, yeah, that was the intent. I mean, we bought it new and it served us well. I mean, it's where I got the cash to fund. <laughs> That first, that franchise, that's what we use yeah. the HELOC to fund it. So, uh, we, the reason the balance is a little higher now is because I merged that back with my original mortgage. Yeah. So and that's, that's the tough, uh, that's the tough thing when it comes to like helping people when it comes to like money is that everyone's indifferent. Like some, you could look at one person that uses a HELOC or a life insurance loan and they look like a genius and you look at other people that do the same and, and it's the exact opposite. And so it really, for me, it's, yeah, we're going to, we're going to look at efficiency, but really 
there's one thing that's really rolling in my head when I think about your financial situation. And it's what is that activity? What is that activity going to be? Because you know, probably better than anybody that life insurance in itself is not a great thing to just have solely. Not an investment. It's not an investment. And so I think it's a, I think what I see you doing is you're in a capitalization phase in your life. And it really is going to be like, where is that? Where is that money going to be? Like, where's that money going? And that's what's going to be like, that's where we could take you through like the investment DNA process of being like, okay, what is that? Cause we just got burnt doing, you know, franchise. So maybe it's not a franchise or maybe it is and knowing what you know, or maybe it's real estate or maybe it's that activity. But what is, what are your thoughts as it relates to that? Is there anything that jumps out to you when it comes to what that activity is? Because for, for me, I, I see you as um, like you're in a really good place. Like you don't have bad debt, which Dave Ramsey would be like, great job. But like, it feels like, all right, we're, we're starting, we're kind of starting over kind of deal. And the cool thing about where the time that we live in is you don't have to spend the next 40 years or 50 years, like doing the traditional way. Like you've already thought outside the box. Like the fact that you have so many life insurance policies that are overfunded means you're willing to think outside the box. So the big thing that we need to do is start buying income and I'll take you through an exercise in a second, but I just want to know, is there an activity that you're interested in that you're like, I would love to do this. And this is going to be the thing that unlocks the ability to not have to work at age 60. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple. Um, one is I, I, I realize this goes back to my roots a little bit with my parents. I do feel that real estate, I, I, that's something I need to get involved in some way or in the, or the other. Uh, I know it can also be predicted and it's not always the right time, but I, I think there's, that's definitely one way. Um, I would be lying to you. I've, I've also connected with some people recently. So I'm getting in a little into e-commerce, which kind of suits my mindset a little bit. Yep. Uh, kind of a data oriented. Like and, and uh, Amazon FBA. To yes, Amazon FBA. Okay. So, I would, and I'm sure you're, be careful, but I think there's, I know people that are making money at that. I actually have a good friend of mine that does that. And I, I can connect you offline if you'd like. Um, and I know quite a few people that have lost money doing Amazon FBA. So I think it, it yeah. doesn't make Amazon FBA good or bad, just like it doesn't make real estate good or bad or franchises good or bad. But I've definitely um, seen both sides. Yeah, I can definitely say it. Uh, a lot of it is just what your products are. You, you can't you can't be tied to always one product. So that's true. I've yep. been looking at that. So. Um, how much money are you saving on a- annually? Cause I know in your life insurance policies, there's some flexibility there, but how much money on an annual basis, if you had to look back last year, are you actually setting aside? This is where it gets interesting because I feel like I overcomplicated my finances the last couple of years as I was trying to mix velocity banking to IBC, like, yeah. but I'm shooting for 20%. I, okay. When I talk with Dom and your, when you guys, when I was really using these policies, that's what I'm shooting for. I really okay, feel like so 20%. So it's, it's, and, and we're going 20% off of your income or your household income. Probably I would say for my, like my own, like, cause I, I would say I'm, I, in a perfect world, I'd be getting 20 to 25,000 as savings a year is what I'd be looking for. Okay. So, so we'll, we'll say for right now, cause it is a little bit confusing looking at your, your situation. We'll say that you're saving, um, 30,000. And, and yeah, yeah, maybe, okay. We'll say 25. We'll say 25. Um, (laughs) And so let me do this in real time. So you're making 155. You're saving 25, meaning you are, your consumption is 130. Um, And, and so if we look at one 130, so my question is, 130,000 if you had some magical thing that was kicking out 130 with inflation is that something like tell me about like tell me about that is that number like hey cuz technically we wouldn't have to save yeah. anything if we had something spitting out cash flow for the rest of our life that we that finance that intentional live life yeah. does 130 increasing with inflation like does that w- would you be would that be like the minimum from a standpoint of like we could that's doable 
I mean, I, when, I, when you talk about that, I mean, that's like life changing stuff right? like there. That's, that's taking what you're, you're getting now. And just, I mean, the, the flexibility to do what you want to impact the world and all this kind of, that's just okay. huge. Okay. I, everyone's different. Some people would look at me and be for like, for me, for me, for me, yeah, I'm, be like life one thirty. That's like, and that's where it's like, I like the intentional living concept is like some people need a million dollars a month. That's true. Who am I? Um, yeah. what I'm trying to do is I never want to put people in a box, but I want to like create like a game plan. So we have 130, and we actually have a, uh, calculator. I'll, sh I'll show this to you. It's, it's a, it's an assessment on our website. Let me share my screen. We do, we're doing age 60. Um, we're initial amount right, right now. What do you have on your assets? 80 i'll just say 80 just for now yeah um you're saving twenty five thousand a year okay so this is a better wealth assessment and the, all this is doing is it's is I'm, I'm just using this from an income standpoint to show you from an income standpoint so if we take 155 we just say this is going to increase your 43 say 43 yeah. um to age 60 so, and we're, we're increasing this by 3% and we're just saying, okay, this is, and we're not including social security and all that other stuff, but this is essentially, this is input output. This is like just modeling what someone's currently doing. And obviously, um, you know, with what you're currently doing, it's, it's not like we, we need to start thinking differently. Um, and so at age 60, your consumption of, um, cause I'm, your consumption of 130, we would need to buy 214,000. Well, let's just round up to $215,000 a year increasing with inflation. Yeah. So here's the reality is majority of people that don't even feel like they're behind, they're behind oh, yeah. the typical financial planning world is a horrible space to be in because no one's talking about income and majority of people that have their half a million million dollar portfolio it's not going to buy them a fraction of what they think it's going to buy um and so the math equation because i because i really i'm going to actually do something i've never done on naked numbers here i'm going to start drawing which could be we could be in for tr some trouble here um here let me draw here Part of what I love so much about this is just, it's just fun to game, game plan. Yeah. Okay. So here, so if 215 is like, is like the number, um, where's my pen? Okay. So we want to get, the goal is to get two, let's just say like two, 215. Now, there can be a couple of things that can be true with this number. This doesn't have to always be passive. I would argue that retirement is not in the Bible anywhere. The goal should not necessarily be to retire. Okay. But the important thing is we don't want to have to work. So the interesting thing is if we just did this typical way and we said the 4% rule, you know, and we, we did this and we, uh, um, we divided this number, this two, 215, and divided by 0 0.4 you you ready for this you would need a 5.3 million dollar portfolio yeah, that's a big old nest egg okay my question is that's just for most people watching this is just not like this is the strategy and yeah we could have an argument some people say this is three percent some people if you do proper planning you could maybe get up to six percent but the reality is this is a pretty daunting number and you, it would pretty much be impossible or irresponsible. Like you could save all your money and it would be hard to, hard to get to. So all the people like the Dave Ramsey and all the, all the well-meaning people that just will say like, you know, save more, invest, all this stuff. Like I just look at it and go like, what's the end result, future cash flow, And like, it's one thing if you're 20 and that's the strategy you want to go, sure. but there's so, so we got to start thinking differently. And, and really this is the way that I'm seeing your, your, 
yourself. So this is this is you and your family. And I'm thinking, okay, right now your input, your you this is your input, your time, you have your time, relationships and other things. You're producing as a family, you're producing 155,000. My first question is with your time and expertise, how do we increase that number? Just just questions, you know, and, you know, and, and they're, they're just not a right or wrong. It doesn't even, but my first question in, in a, in a coaching relationship is I'm saying, okay, is there, is there something in the IT space that you could potentially do to make yourself more valuable? Is there a side gig that doesn't take crazy amounts of risk? Is there, and, and you guys might find that like, Hey, we're no, the answer is no. I I've talked to some people that are like, we're, our income is like we're max we're not willing to do anything more which is fine but like i want you to know that it would be we could have all kinds of conversations about part two which we'll have in a second but one of the things that could radically change your life is if you make more but maintain your current standard of living okay so that's my first question is how do we increase increase this now the second question is from this money coming in it's, it's going two places. Um, we're, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt and saying you're saving 25 K. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah, you're, you're being kind. Of, yeah. I mean, and, and again, like this is where you wonder why people work with us day in and day out. It's we, we give the accountability. Um, so then that means 130 is going out now. Now some of this is you don't really have bad debt spending wise. I, are you guys, you know, in California, like, are you guys spending a lot of money or is that not, not really a, I mean, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. I think for the average person, we don't think we always think, well, we could always spend more or someone else is spending yeah. more. But I mean, I, I, I'm always cautious because the truth is I think we could always be more efficient with our money. Yeah, that's true. But my dad always liked to say, there's no point in having the money if you can't spend some of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what I would, here's what I would do is I would do, do spending, spending thing. And any, anything that I mentioned, we can give you resources for. Okay. So I would do a, um, spending exercise with you and your wife and just be like, Hey, what are our fixed? What are our variable expenses? And are we spending money on things that we value? I would look at debt and I've already looked at your debt. Doesn't seem like there's much there. So congrats. But, um, like I, I, I mean, I wouldn't pay off the car debt, you know, like I, so we can talk about that in a second, but, um, you know, it, it, I think you guys for, for what it is, you guys are in a good place. And I would look at taxes and especially being in California, I think it would be well worth you understanding from a tax perspective, where, where's where are we at for, and and is there something even if we did a side job could i write off some things in in our house and all of that and i think from a tax perspective this is what i look at but it, it might you we might find some efficiencies here but i think really my mindset goes if if we could figure out a way to make this number bigger and keep this number the same obviously taxes are going to affect a little bit like this number really here, it's like, we're not going to, the traditional way of how much money you need to save, we've already approached that. It's like, that's not beneficial. Not gonna, but yeah. the more money we can save, obviously the better, because I see the more money saving as like a resource. Sure. So now the whole concept of infinite banking, you are funding life insurance policies, okay? And in this life insurance policies, you're getting, you know, gr conservative growth. You're getting lots of benefits. You're getting a death benefit. You're getting um, safety, getting um, your money's very liquid early on. You're getting other benefits and it's protecting your family. So legacy is important. And we could probably argue when you factor in all the benefits, you're getting six or 7% rate of return on your money. People will ask Caleb, where do I get that? I'm literally looking at it and adding all the benefits to death benefits, to chronic illness riders, to the actual growth of compounding, the fact that you have access to your money and the fact that it grows tax advantage. And so you live in state of California. So you could make the argument that it's anywhere from five to 10% when you factor in all those things, still not going to change your life, but it's, but it's a place to store. And I like the fact that you're, you've set this up and I think it's great. So then the real question is, I have money building up in these policies. The real question is, 
I have access to use this money for, let's just say 5%. Just to make it simple, I'm going to say 5%. 5% control cost. So when I think of 5% control cost, it's costing me money to control my money. So where I use this money, I need to earn greater than 5%. Because if I pay 5% to earn three, that's a negative 40% on my money. Yeah, but there, if better I, some, there better be some other big yeah. benefit if you're doing that, right? So, so, and this is where I think this is where like, this is for you, but also for the people watching. The reason I'm not a fan of using your policy to pay off car debt is you, you, yes, it made sense financially because you paid five to earn, to pay off uh, something at six. In the grand scheme of things, the opportunity cost because you don't have unlimited money, you're unable to say yes to something that could create that much more. So it's just something that like, I think of everything from a, whether it's a debt or an asset, I go, I try to put it in the same pot and be like, should I pay this off or should I invest? And so some people are like fans of paying off mortgages and stuff with their policy. And I just mathematically, I, I, I don't understand it, but even if it made sense financially, we have to think opportunity cost. Sure. And what we need to do is we need to put our money in activities. I don't know if that's the right way to spell activities, but you get the <laughs> point. We need activities that create cash flow. And at the end of the day, we need we need to like the number, whether it's active or passive, needs to be two hundred plus thousand. Yeah. Okay. So this is where this is where the mentality is like, what is this gonna be? And how can this money ultimately fuel some of this, but also don't discount the time, the wisdom, the good looks, you name it of this, like this person's going to make a break this whole model. A lot of people devalue themselves, but the money is going to be a tool that this person's going to be able to use to, to create more. And the cool thing about this is as we create this number, some of it will be active. Some of it will be passive. And I don't like, I use the word leverage versus passive because I don't, I don't have a negative view of leverage. And I think leverage is anytime you're using a, a person, a resource, dollars to be able to create something. Um, not that we're using somebody, but it's like sure, you want to yeah. leverage your resources. I dig it. So all that to say, this is a huge question mark. And this is where I would be thinking, okay, what? What, what I would be looking at, and this is where the investor DNA comes in. I would be looking at, okay, what am I, what, what am I like, what am I naturally good at skills, skills? One thing that I want to just point out is if you understand it, the world of AI, I believe every single company needs to be leveraging AI and needs to understand it. So there's a world where you can use, you can take your skill set and potentially cr make a ton of of money because of how you leverage that technology. That's, that's, that's one. Um, and, and just going down the list of looking at your skill sets, looking at your money, which you have, but you don't have a ton. So it's like looking at your resources and saying, okay, like I can't deploy a million bucks, but I, but so where's the best bang for my buck? And, um, and you have time. And, and you're disciplined and there's other things that are like Mr. Iron Man and other things that you're like, I, if I'm talking to you, it's going to be different from the other person. For sure. And, and then ultimately we need to buy cash flow, and everything should really be measured in, in, in cash flow. And this is not investment advice, but I would be, I would not be saying yes to anything using your policy or deploying any capital if it's not. If it's not really like, I would rather have your money sitting, not being deployed than having it tied up and it not being available for you to say yes, whether it's now or three years from now. So I, I'm really weird. I look at life insurance as a emergency opportunity. And then if I'm going to say yes, it's going to be a heck yes. I'm not tying up liquidity and, and control for average returns. Yeah. For me, I'm really clear that business business for me is the most fulfilling it's it we cash flow like we're able to create lots of cash flow we're able to create impact so it checks a lot of boxes and so for me I, I look at how do i invest in my own business and in future businesses that help 
me serve other people, but it ultimately talk about leverage cash flow like it's there. Um, but there's some people, there's a lot of people I know that do that through real estate. There's some people that do alternative investing. I think for you, you need to be able to take some type of skill set and incorporate it into whatever, because if not, I just don't see the long-term returns being what needs to happen to be able to um, help you with intentional living. Because right now, I don't think 60, not being able to work at all is going to be something that should be your goal. It should be like as soon as possible, loving every moment of your life and knowing that you're financing that. And I think that has a lot to do with active. So I, I did a lot of talking, but Amen. I've never drawn before, but Amen. I just, I love it. but I just, this is how, this is the framework of how I would, how I would be thinking. And, um, and, uh, so I'm going to stop and hear your thoughts, questions. Um, I get fired up, dude. Like this fires me yeah, up. That's all right. Sorry if I interrupted along the way. No, you're good. <laughs> no, my thoughts. I, uh, no, I'm, I'm very much in that same place. Um, I've looked at a lot of different opportunities coming out and this, you know, this idea of, and I've spent some time doing some research. What is my investor DNA? I love that term. Cause I think it really is true. Like too often we just look at what somebody down the street did and we try and recreate it, but it's not really our skills or what we have. So, uh, you know, there's some influence you to say that you say it too. It's like, know yourself, know your skills and know who you are. So I've been spending some time on that. I have a couple of things in the works I am working on. Um, who knows how they're going to work out. Um, but, um, I, I, I 100% know. Man, how do I say this? L let me, let me tell you a little story. <laughs> I, I had a talk, a, a really hard to hard talk with my wife last year and it almost kind of took her back a little bit in the sense that she's, she said, you know, I knew we had this bankruptcy and everything, but like the way I was talking, I was talking about, listen, Here's some, we need to seek passive income, this idea. Like we, it's not going to be enough. I, I, I had that, I've had that realization. I know it. I'm trying to share with her that, uh, with my family that you can't just save your way to wealth. Yeah. You can't, you can't save your way to wealth. So, um, so we were talking about that and she kind of said, well, I thought we were fine. You know, I thought we we're doing what we need to be like, everything's right. And I said, the truth is we're doing okay with what we have what we're not doing is we're not like that emphasis for so long for us has been saved to for wealth, but that's not really where we need to go. So I agree 100% with what you're saying. And I'm, I'm on board. I would be lying if I said that the big, one of the biggest challenges for me has been kind of as a, as that IT brain, that person who analyzes yep. I, I, in the past, uh, it was great to open that business because it helped force me to get better at making decisions. Um, but analysis paralysis is a real thing. And especially yep. for me compounded with getting burned in a business yep. that, that, that has made it, I, the, this last year has been really opening. I finally feel like I'm coming back to life a little bit, but it yep. was about like two years of just like being gun shy, like, which was nice that I found an IBC. Cause like you said, and I feel the same way. Okay. One thing I, I one thing I have to do right now is accumulate. Like I need to capitalize. Capitalize. Yeah. Yep. Like that, I shouldn't say accumulate, but like, cause that's kind of, can have bad connotations too, but that capitalization 100%, um, yep. regardless of what I do, I know that's the most, that's what I need to be doing right now, regardless yep. of what I do. So my yep. mindset was pay off these cars and things that kind of free up that cash flow. But I also realize now, like you already yep. pay them yep. off and it's like, well, well, it's paid now. At least I'm putting the money back, but yep. it's, you're right. Yeah. If I, you know, I just spent 20 on a car. If I had that 50, then there's an opportunity to get 50, you know, note investing or whatever, 12% or whatever it is. You know I mean? Like, there's yeah, here's yeah. what, how much money would you and your wife feel comfortable, like good about in an emergency fund? Because I, what I'm about to share with you is actually like the most simple thing that I've shared on the show, but it's like, it's, I'm so clear that this is what you guys need to hear. So what, what would that emergency fund be? Well, I grew up in my early years doing that you know, start with your one and then three to six months. I mean, I'd love to have a year's worth. Uh, I know there's some other people who ad advocate that and I kind of love that. I didn't, it sounds good, but, um, you know, I don't know the, the safety guy in me is that I don't know if it's always realistic, especially where I'm at right now. That's kind of why I like IBC though, because I feel like I can have a little bit of that emergency fund in those policies as well. But so, I mean, but, but you if you had to answer the question, like, um, a hundred thousand, <laughs> yeah, I danced around a little bit. I would say a hundred. I, okay, I would okay. say yeah. Okay, so 
what I would do is I would be very, very careful to, I do not think the mindset right now is leverage your money. I think it's leverage your skill set and time. And I think there's a lot of ways to make money without risking any money. Okay. So number one thing that I would, I would do is have the conversation, look at your time as from a portfolio standpoint and ask the question, how can I, how can I create more value? That whole exercise. I have a value leveraging frameworks that I can give you. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So that, that would be like number one, all the money. Again, I would continue to save as much as possible. And I would look at your portfolio into two, two things. E stands for emergency. O stands for opportunity. I would build up your hundred K emergency. You can do that in a policy. And obviously it's, it's, you know, there's going to be benefits and like the way that you're saving, you could do that um, pretty, pretty quickly. Okay. And it's not like that. It's not like you can't say yes to anything, but like really like part of the emergency is everything gets better when you have that foundation. So step number one is, is figure out how we can create more and, but really reverse engineering saying, I'm not going to leverage my money at this point. I'm going to leverage my greatest asset time. You like, there's other things that I think are, I think are going to be really key because there's a ton of opportunities to make money right now. Um, and there's a ton of ways to make money, maybe it's not even using money. Um, so that's, that's, and then number two, build that emergency. The, number three is once you have overflow, this is opportunity. This is where it, you know, if I had to make this green, um, this is where, this is where I think of a fund. Like this is the money that I'm, I'm like deploying. And the whole goal of this is to be fuel on, I don't know what happened, but to, to, to be fuel for whatever I want to be doing. And I think in the next one, two, three years, you're going to have way more clarity than you have today. And this fuel will be able to double down on what you're doing. I think the thing to be wary of is anytime someone's giving you a return for money, it's going to be an average returns, which is, which is fine. Like there's, there's opportunities, but you're also taking on risk. I like the idea of using this as a fuel to, and I don't know if you have hundred percent clarity now. I, I think in a year or two you will, but the cool thing is you can start today on these two things. Um, and over the next 20 years, you like easily, and I, I want this to be an encouragement. I believe in less than 10 years, you could, you could, you could have 200 to $300,000 coming in and, and it could be because of this mindset. I can say that confidently because I know people like personally, I'm a case study myself of like getting clear in a couple things. It doesn't take, it doesn't have to take 30, 40 years to be able to do that. Um, and so that's, yeah. that's my, that's my, uh, like infinite banking is awesome. But I think like, I think sometimes we can get the analytical brain can get so caught up on like the being efficient with our policy and we're, and we're zooming out and we're, and we're putting a lot of time and energy on things that are actually not going to move the needle in our life. For sure. And that's kind of what's is speaking to me right now is, is, um, I really like, that's what speaks to me right now as it relates to that. It's, it's the, what are the actual things that are going to move the needle in your life? It's going to be this and this, but this might come four years and that should be okay. Yeah. Like that we, you should be okay four years from now if all you do is build up build up and capitalize knowing that it's, you're not throwing money away because compounding is not going to be something that's going to change your life. It's going to be the injection of cash sure. and it's going to be cash flow creation. What are questions? Any, you can, this is a two way street. You can push back. You can ask me anything. <laughs> push back. Um, I had, I've, I've had someone on the show. It was a blast. We were, I was going at him cause I, I was giving him like, again, this is not insurance advice, investment advice, legal advice. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a psychiatrist. Don't sue me, please. Hopefully that this is inspira inspiring you when you're watching or listening. Um, but I had someone like I could tell, like, didn't want to listen to me and that's fine. Um, but we had a good conversation and actually from that conversation, we actually unpacked some of the reasons why which is really cool. So what are your, what's your thoughts? And you can ask me anything, you can push back, you can throw a curveball. The floor is yours. No, I mean, I, I, the one thing I, and I, I agree with like what way you laid out. And I think I like that you're 
you include the fact that, yeah, dude, you're still working. Like it, I think sometimes it's a little unrealistic in the world. Somebody's like, yeah, you're gonna be fully passive like this. Like you need to look at the whole, the whole self, the whole body, the, the whole everything. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's really important too. And, to, and to say that even that growth at four years, it should still be growing. That's a lot, a lot of long, I mean, hopefully, I'd hopefully nothing else, you know, happens, but, um, I mean, I guess I do, I guess I have the policies for my family if something happens to me. Yeah. So, -feeling. so, uh, you know, I got that. Right. But, um, um, yeah, I, like I, I know I need, I need to get that passive income. I know it's going to make the difference. I'm actually looking forward to making more policies. Like uh, this whole idea of, I see, if my daughter sees this, I'll say like, I, I mean, my kids, they're going to I hope they have kids. I hope they're blessed with that opportunity. Yeah. And I want, I, I want to be whatever they're going to call me, the guy who helps spread that. I want, I want all my kids to be able to have access to that cash. Not, like yeah. I said, not just for buying a, a car or whatever. That may be part of it to be more efficient with our money as a family. But like, I want them to be able to, like, my parents did that, were able to do that for me to help me out a lot of different things, right? Like, yeah. A landscaping the backyard my dad would loan me money at like three percent we signed a note and everything like you're talking about money like learning from you you know um so that's something that i really think of too like is we're talking about all this money long term i i've said i want to leave my kids each a good amount of money i want them and their families and i, I don't want it to go out so um the passive income for me that just i mean it's such a it's such an i how i put it, like for me what it does and it may not do this for everybody I think we all deep down have like our ideas, that question. We, we've all yeah. heard it, right? Like, what do you want to do? What would you do if money was no object? Yeah. yeah. I think most people have like a talk, but then you quickly within seconds are like, I don't, I, that, well, that's not going to happen. So I don't do it. But I truly believe like with what we're talking about and this mindset and doing, I wish more people knew it. I, I, I truly believe it will be possible and it may not be exact. I, yeah, it will be. Scientists, it may not be exact, right? Like, mm -hmm. but you still have uninterrupted compounding. You still have growth. Yeah. Like you may not get there year 50, maybe be 53 or what, yeah. like quit arguing with the dumb things about like, let's just like yeah. make the, these changes and move in the right direction. Like, and my whole thing is you have one life and so many people are just hedging and not truly living. Yeah. And it's like, what's the cost of not living your life? And what's the, like, what's the opportunity cost of regret? You know, I don't, there's no calculator that can, that can make that. And the other, the other thing is instead of passive, I would I highly it. encourage you to use the word leveraged. You did say that. That's right. I love it. And here's why is I don't think, I think passive income can also be very discouraging at this point. Like I get what you're I saying, say, like, yeah, defeating. Like, I can't get but, but it's like leverage means like what, how can I leverage what I'm currently doing? How can I leverage my inputs to create and it doesn't mean I have to wake up to make this thing come in. So some people would call that pa passive, but I'm thinking like, how do I create systems, websites, relationships, partnerships? How do I create, how do I create that to, to make that happen? And that's where I think it's like, yeah, it's like, I can take the life coachy fluff because quite frankly, it's fluff. But I also like, when I, when I look at the math and stuff, I go like, I mean, we take, we could do the math on like, if we reverse engineer, like this is what, if I, if I just want to do like a, what, what does someone need to save? I could do a, a, a calculation and just for fun, I think this would be fun to like, if we needed a $5.3 million nest egg and let's just say we are starting over. So we need a five, five, three, zero, 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 zero. And we, and you're going to earn 7%, let's just say that in 20 years, your, your payment would be $130,000 a year. So it's like, all right, typical, typical, like that's impossible. Like that's so like, if, if we just lay it there, it's like, you need to save more and maybe need to earn more. It's like, yeah, that maybe, maybe everyone's like, yeah, that's what you should do. But like, you're not walking away. Like no one's getting better because of that conversation. That's just like impossible. It that's is. where my mindset goes. It's like, there's, there's gotta be something that shifts because this input output ratio is just not, not happening. That might be a paradigm shift, Caleb. 
leveraged instead of passive income. Yeah, I mean, maybe I hey, haven't heard anybody there's, else maybe say there's that. Future you, you <laughs> there, there's future, and I can't take credit for the concept of leveraged, okay. but like I definitely am going to write more and create more around leveraged cash flow versus passive. I don't. I don't think I've ever heard anyone else say leveraged cla- leveraged cash flow. I don't think I. I honestly don't think I have. Yeah. Yeah. You, you go to more masterminds and things, so maybe you have, but yeah. I, I, I don't. Yeah, no, it's it's something that we 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 very much try to teach around because yeah. not not in a scammy investment way, but just more from a mindset way. So, yeah. any any anything else? Any any? No, man, I I I appreciate it. Like, I'm so I. I still say to this day, in terms of infinite banking, these I wish I had heard of it sooner. Not that I, I don't know. We never know what. There's a million choices we could have made that are different, and it's funny to think. Oh, I wonder what my life would be different. That's not what I mean. I just mean in terms of having access to cash. If I had used it that way when I funded yeah. myself, like would I have made the same decision if I had had that cash? Right? I had I had had that accumulated. And I had that opportunity fund. Would I have invested it where I did? I'm telling you, no, you never know. Hindsight's 2020, but like I would probably say, you know, this is probably a risky one. That real one, don't lose, don't lose cash, right? The the rules, number one, don't lose cash. Number two, see rule one. Yeah. Like I, I probably wouldn't have done it, right? But I mean, that's also what makes the truth is that's what makes me, I think, personally, a better investor, a better financial person in that sense. Like I've I've been burned. Uh, I I took some of that advice, yeah. the, the old school advice, and. It didn't work out. It certainly, I have friends that it, stuff's worked great, great for, but I look at my failure to their success. And I mean, there are so many variables. It's, you know, you, you need to put your money, you, you need to, money is a resource. It's a blessing, right? Ultimately, if you're, if you're like me, um, it's, it's a, it's a resource given to us from our father in heaven, to bless your life, your family's life, your community, the world, right? How do you use that resource? Um, and unfortunately, like you said, people get discouraged yep. because we talk about getting this or they're watching the influencer saying this or the life coach or whatever. And, and they're just like, I can never get that. And I mean, how defeating is that? Which is not the intent for me. That's not what it's about at all. We, we're given talents, we're given times to, to make a difference. Yeah. Um, so I applaud what you're doing. I love, I, I mean, you, I know you get a kick out of it. You feel passionate about it. That's why you're doing it. You wouldn't be doing it if you weren't passionate about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm grateful. I get to be here and get from the man, the myth, the <laughs> legend. Well, well, thank you. And and I, I just want to say like, um, thank you for being willing to come on the show, sharing like some, I mean, this is one thing I want to point out. Anytime we share, publicly like things that we've messed up on or we look back and lessons not only are, is that amazing for you to be able to be like i'm my identity's not in that but also like there's a ton of wisdom and there's a lot of people that can learn a lot through you um and unfortunately you're not going to make you, you know you're not going to get a percentage of all the wisdom that people gain from you and what they that compounds to but i think it's going back to the quote of you know the value for life is how much of it was given away. Like, I want to thank you for being willing. And, and I just want to give a call to action to anyone listening to this or watching this. Like, I'm not, I'm not that scary. Like we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. And if you have questions, if you want to do the full naked number experience where you give your financial situation, like the only way that we're going to really move the needle and change the way people think is long form conversations. Because like, there's not just one little like nugget thing that I memorize. Like it's a conversation but through that, I really believe that people's lives are going to get changed by listening to this. And so, Brian, I want to thank you for being an early adapter, for being someone that has been a huge, um, I won't say fan, but advocate for what we're up to. And I look forward to seeing what the future holds. I look forward to meeting you in person. And uh, I know the best is yet to come. Excellent. Same here. Thanks, Caleb. All right.